All right, welcome to the Brent Brennan Weekly Press Conference. The Spartans come off a big 33 to 16 win at Wyoming last Saturday, and now they host UNLV Friday night at Seth Q Stadium at 7.30 p.m. on CBS Sports Network. Coach Brennan will have a quick statement and then feel free to ask questions, Coach. All right, good to see everybody. Obviously, it's a big week for us. Um, coming off an exciting win at the University of Wyoming, um, you know, Coach Bull and that staff and that program, we have incredible respect for. It was great to see our team play, uh, just play hard and make plays when we needed to. I thought we showed up uh, and made plays in, in all phases, which was exciting. Um, you know, I think, you know, uh, you know, there's been a lot of conversation. We had a scary moment there with our player, Noah Wright, and he's doing a lot better. And, you know, one of the things that happened there that is incredible that I don't think the world, I think the world needs to hear about is our interim president, Dr. Perez, was on the trip with his wife, Tanya, and they went to the hospital with our player and looked after him in a time that he was obviously going through something really serious. And I've never heard of that before. I've been around college athletics since 1998. I have never heard of a president doing that. And I just want to say thank you to him and his wife for the kindness and compassion they showed one of our students and one of our players in, in NOAA. And uh, they were on the phone with his family while it was going on. And uh, you know that, that's leadership to me. That's incredible, incredible leadership. Um, so thank you to them. Um, obviously, this is a huge week for us. There's so much going on. Another home game. We're excited to get back in Seth Q. We've had great support from our students, great support from the San Jose community, great support from our fans and our alums. I think we've had back-to-back -back the biggest attendance we've had in over a decade, uh, which is just outstanding. And, and hopefully we can continue that trend for this big uh, Mountain West Conference game. It's also our Damn Worth It game, which is, um, you know, organization started at Oregon State two years ago um, with uh, kind of the mission to end the stigma surrounding mental health for student athletes. It's a peer-based group. I think it's a really good thing. I talk a lot about mental health with our team. I talk a lot about it with our administration and the importance of it right now for young people. And I think it is, um, it needs, there, there needs to be more time, effort, and resources put in that space at every college campus in America. And I think we're doing a great job of it here, but um, I, I, I think this damn worth it is really powerful because it's it's peer-to-peer. And I think that, that, that there's real power when you have people your same age looking out for each other. And so that is what this, this game is. We're going to be wearing a green ribbon on our helmets, which I think is also a really cool part. And then we have a big-time opponent coming in town. Um, UNLV is playing great football right now. They're outstanding in all three phases. Watch the tape. Um, their quarterback is an excellent player. They are opportunistic on defense, creating turnovers and, and playing hard. And so I think this is going to be a heck of a football game. So if anybody is looking for something fun to do on Friday night, come on out to SEFQ. We're going to have a great game day atmosphere, a great place to watch a game, and a big time football game on national TV that should have a lot of energy and a lot of excitement. So let's go. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> Questions for Coach? Coach, even last year with the UNLV, even with just two wins, they played pretty well. They brought teams to the brink, even yep. you guys. Um, what is, are you surprised or not with what Marcus is doing that in such a short period of time? I'm not surprised, right? I've, I've known Marcus, uh, you know, he and I kind of got started together in this thing. And, I, you know, I think a lot of people know that we're really close and that we, we talk a lot and bounce ideas off each other. But um, I'm, I'm not surprised. Um, he's really, really smart guy. He's great with people. He's incredibly, you know, driven. Um, and so I think you could start to see some of that stuff a year ago, right? Like they took us to the wire. I'm pretty sure the four games prior to our game were all final drive, decided on the final drive, right? Um, and and our, our game was no different, right? The last play of the game, Kyle Harmon gets a sack and we win and that's it. But um, so we know we've got a heck of a challenge with them coming in here and they're playing better than they did a year ago, right? Um, you know, Brumfield is an excellent quarterback and he, he gives them an, another dimension. Uh, with his ability to, to move and throw on the run, but he's also a good passer. So he's, he's a dynamic player, and that's a, that, that element wasn't quite the same a year ago because he was injured. So this is a big-time battle we got coming on Friday night. That's why I'm saying people need to show up and see it. It's going to be fun. Coach, uh, Kyrie's kind of found his groove these last two games. Um, can you talk a little bit about um, his development after kind of starting off a little slow and what 
what things you've seen out of him these past two weeks that really impressed you? Yeah, you know, I've never lost faith in Kyrie. He has been an incredibly steady player since the moment he showed up here, you know, three and a half years ago. Uh, just an awesome young person, uh, incredibly hardworking, and loves to practice and loves to play. Like, he takes the detail and the process so serious, and I think that's starting to show up in the way he's running the football. And to a certain extent, that's also in my mind, like, what it should be, right? The, the, you know, in college football right now, or maybe everywhere, NFL, like everyone expects the rookie to be the best, that they drafted to be the best player on the team, or some recruit that just got there to be the best player on the team. But being good at football on this level is a developmental process. It takes time. It takes time, yeah. You might have a freshman flash here and there, but to get like steady, high level production, um, you know, that takes time. And I think, you know, here now we have Kyrie who's, you know, going into this four season playing with us and you're starting to see that take off, which is to me what exactly what it should be, right? Continue to improve, continue to attack the process of development and then hopefully put good results out there as a, as a product, as a byproduct of the work you put in. So it was interesting this past week and I was looking at Chev's numbers for, between uh, this year and and Hawaii, seeing if there's anything that was different, that like really any glaring differences, but there really isn't much. So when it comes to him on the field, are you seeing anything different? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I don't know that I'm really trying to compare 2021 Chevin to 2022 Chevin, right? I'm just worried about him this week. Um, and so I do like where he's at right now. I think he continues to improve. I think he continues to distribute the ball to lots of different players on the field, which I think can be advantageous for us and in making us hard to defend. If we match that up with some good run game, I think that makes it a real challenge. Um, he's super competitive. And I mentioned in my press conference after the Wyoming game, he's got really, really good poise. And so that poise, I think, allows him to, you know, be smart with the football and be patient and see what he sees and go through his progression and, and hopefully go to the right person with the ball. In that case, then, what do you think has helped the transition? I mean, now we're four games in. Like, there's been a pretty seamless transition. What do you think has gone into that? Well, I, you know, I think there's real maturity there, right? And so I think, um, you know, that combined with the maturity of some of the wideouts that, that, that joined us. And then, you know, up front there, there's a couple upperclassmen, senior offensive linemen, and Jaime Navarro and Anthony Pardue, combined with Kyrie, that, that have played a lot of football here, you know, and tight end, you know. You have Mazzotti and you got Sam Olson. So some guys that have been around, I think that's kind of given that thing a little bit of stability, even though it, takes some, it took some time to, for that to gel and for that to show up the right way. And I, and I think it's, it's still continuing to evolve. It's continuing to grow. I don't think we're um, at our best by any stretch of the imagination yet. And, and that's why we practice and that's why we study tape and that's why I invest so much time in continuing to develop. And to Shevin's credit, he's all about that, right? He's at the facility all the time. He's, Spending, out, spending time with Coach McGiven. He's spending time with the other players, like watching film, talking about stuff, talking about scheme, talking about defenses. And that kind of effort and that kind of intentionality, I think, gives us a chance to play good football. Unively has, obviously, Brumfield's very big. Their yep. running back's very big. Similar to what Auburn did, like late in the game, their size and their big athletes kind of seemingly can wear down you know, defenses. Mm -hmm. yep. Any particular scheme or mentality that Coach Odom might you know, make more aware of guys like these? You know, um, I, I think the biggest difference is just the quarterback that way, right? Because we've been dealing with big backs for three weeks now. Like, that's not a new thing, right? We've been dealing with good running backs and good sound run game and, and that kind of stuff. To me, the quarterback is the, is, is the biggest challenge there. I don't know that it matters who you're playing. I, I, I think there's a certain mentality, there's a certain mindset you have to have in the fourth quarter to close out games and to, and to finish games. And that's more, that would be more of our focus than kind of, you know, how that is with a big back or a quarterback or that part of it. Like there has to be a, a mindset of like, how detailed are we gonna be and how disciplined in those tough moments, right? Staying on side, um, making good choices, around the quarterback, right? Like getting to the football, like just how hard can we play and how focused can we, can we be late in a game when we're tired? And, and that's where, that's something that you're always trying to develop. You're always trying to cultivate. 
um, that kind of effort and intensity and focus late in a game when you are fatigued and the game is on the line. We need your best stuff. Uh, Coach, uh, one, one of the themes that I've seen talking to guys like Shevin and Elijah are, you know, we're getting more comfortable. Every week it's we're more comfortable. What kind of things on and off the field are you, is the coaching staff, is it the faculty doing to get these guys more comfortable, not just on the field, but like off the field in San Jose and stuff like that? Well, those guys are roommates. So I hope they're comfortable to, together, you know. Uh, Lockhart's in there too. Um, I haven't been by their apartment for a few months, but last time I went by, they definitely needed to take out the trash. Um, but just, you know, I think about that stage in my life, I probably wasn't the cleanest guy either. Um, but I, th I think that's, that's helping that, right? They're together all the time. So if it's, you know, nine o'clock on a Monday night and they're all done with their, their academic stuff, they'll throw on some film and be like, hey, let's watch this, or let's watch this, and let's watch this cut up, which I think is valuable because they're watching it together and they're having the conversations together. And I think that's really, really impactful um, for, to build their chemistry and, and, and also their trust with each other. So I do kind of want to piggyback off of what you were saying, um, or when you were answering Vic's question, I think what I'm most interested in is the last 15 minutes of the game, just because, I mean, UNLV, great comeback last week against New Mexico, and then you guys closed really well against Western Michigan, but then also against Wyoming. Interested to seeing what kind of specific preparations are being made for this game. Well, I don't know that there's like a specific, it's just this game, right? The previous games don't have anything to do with this game, right? Like that part of it, I think sometimes, right? We're not playing Wyoming in the fourth quarter. So that's why I talked with Vic more about the mentality and the mindset of that being able to focus when you're tired and be able to play with great effort and, and discipline when you're fatigued. The, um, you know, games play out how they play out, right? Like I couldn't have predicted we were in that, gonna be in that situation with Wyoming. Um, the same way I couldn't have predicted Auburn, right? So um, every game, you know, ebbs and flows and changes that way. I think we have to do a good job of preparing ourselves for all situations, right? Um, you know, today, you know, we had a big chunk of two-minute situation, right? Like we have to be able to execute it at a high level regardless of what the circumstances the game puts us in. How cool are, uh, would it be to see this power shift of San Jose State UNLV, you know, besides the status quo and, and whatnot? You see social media, they're like, they don't see it or believe it, but they sense it, you know? And how cool would that be? Well, for starters, I think it's dangerous. dangerous. We're putting a ton of value in the opinion of the social media, <laughs> um, right? You know, anyone can say anything there. But to me, I am excited about the fact that there is a meaningful game being played between San Jose State football and UNLV football. I think that's cool. And I think it speaks to the quality of our conference that every week, if you don't come ready to play, you can get beat. And it, the conference is extremely well coached. There are very good players at every school. And you can get, you know, last year we were playing in the Raiders, you know, in the Death Star, you know, the, the big spaceship out there in Vegas that, they, that the Raiders play in. And last week we were at 7,200 feet, you know, and and so there's some really cool things about this conference that way. But I love the fact that San Jose State football and, U and UNLV are playing a really meaningful game uh, you know, early in the season. I think that's really, really neat and really exciting for the conference. It's exciting for the Mountain West, right? Uh, Coach, one, one of the things that I've uh, been talking to players these past couple weeks, uh, they, one of the things that they told me was, when you look good, you feel good. And so you guys had a couple, you know, you got a New Jersey a couple weeks ago. Um, they really like the white ones last week. Do you have, is there any merit in that, that when you, when you look good, when you have a nice uh, get up on that you, you play good? I, I think there's something to it. I think, I think looking good has something to do with feeling good, right? I mean, it's when you, you know, when you go to the Academy Awards, right? Like you don't wear like flip flops and board shorts, you know what I mean? I mean, you look good. Um, and so I, I don't know, I, I think um, that is specific to individuals, right? For some guys, that's really important. Some guys spend a half hour in front of the mirror every morning. Some guys throw on a baseball hat and brush their teeth and walk out and attack their day that way. And both can have success, whatever they're trying to get done in that moment. So, um, but I, I do think that it's important that as a, as a football program, 
that we do a great job outfitting our team and making sure that we look good and our uniform is clean and that we are well accessorized and we have stuff that is fun to wear and also functional to wear and looks good. I, I think that matters. So obviously we're very close with you know V head coach Marcus Arroyo. I'm interested. So are you guys like texting game week at all? Do you guys talk at all? Talk at all, or do you just that's there's nothing, and then after the game you guys chat about everything. We texted right after our game, and then we will talk pregame on Friday night. I think um, uh, you know he's he is he is a good friend, and I you know I just did an interview with the Mountain West, and and like I love Marcus Royal. He's a dear friend. He's a great coach. He's a great person. And, you know, I, in my time as a head coach, I've been fortunate because other head coaches have helped me when I had questions. They've helped me try and figure out some of the things that have come up that I didn't know or didn't anticipate or whatever. And I try to be that for Marcus, right? Sometimes he doesn't want my, my advice, um, but that's okay. But we have a great relationship that way. And, it, um, and, and our friendship is bigger than football, and that's okay. Right? Friday night's about football. Right? We'll still be friends after the game. Kind of a fun question on, on that. Um, I know he was in your wedding as well and all that. And can you share maybe some similarities and differences? You know, he's, he's, he looks pretty yoked and he's uh, yeah, a yeah, yeah, guy and all yeah, that. He, yeah, there's no question that Marcus lifts more weights than I do. Um, but yeah, and, and, he is, uh, and he wears like a little bit tighter shirt to accentuate the guns. So I'm, I'm, I'm envious of that. I don't, I don't quite have that, that kind of muscle definition. Um, but we do have a lot of fun. And we have a lot of fun talking football and talking family. He's got a young family. My family's a little bit older, right? Like, we, we talk about everything in between, you know? And I think, um, you know, our wives talk, right? Our, when, he, when he became a head coach, his wife and my wife talked about the head coach's wife thing. Like, it's, it's cool. And I, I think that's, yeah, our, we have this really strong friendship, but... You know, I think that's a cool thing about football is coaches help other coaches. Like, it's not like other kinds of business, right, where we have some, like, proprietary concept that we can't share with anybody and we're not willing to talk about it. Like, I think that's a really cool thing is that, um, you know, is that we love the game of college football and we're trying to make it better. And the more we share, the better ideas we get, the more input we get, the better we can make good decisions to move us forward. Uh, Coach, uh you guys have a lot of experience on this, on this defensive squad. Um, how important is it going into games like this UNLV game where it's high stakes, you know, it's 4-1 it's and one versus 3-1? and one. Um, How important is it to have guys who have been there before, like Cade, like Kyle, um, in these big situations, to have them on, you know, have them on the field and even on the sideline just talking to guys? I, I mean, I think it's critical. I, I think we are extremely fortunate to have the, the – caliber of player all those guys are and then the caliber of people and leaders those guys are you know um, that that defensive group it's a special group and you know we have been in this a long time here right like we have been through the highs and lows and just like all the challenges that come at you and and so it's awesome to see those guys again continue to play at a high level continue to develop um, developing their leadership and their voice with our football team and it's critical having players of that caliber. But uh, what those guys bring to the table in terms of who they are as men is even more compelling than what they do on the field. And that's what I love about them. Is there any more juice for the, I mean, it is a great, as was stated before, it is going to be a great matchup. But is there any juice being the standalone Friday night game? I know that's something that fans, I mean, that's why Mountain West does kind of have a cult fan base is because of those standalone Friday night games. You know, I, I hope so. Like, I hope it's, it's, it adds some juice to it. Uh, I, you know, I, I think that's cool. I, th I think any time we can be the only team on television, I'm excited about that because we're trying to continue to push our brand, our university out there and, and help the public and the world be more aware of the amazing things that are happening in our institution and with our athletics department. There's a lot of really cool stuff happening here. I can't wait for that, you know, for the – cameras to show the new facility right to show how incredible that is the same way they've done for UNLV every time UNLV plays they show their facility which is now four years old right um, but when this home game for us they're going to show the new Spartan Athletic Complex and how the 
how it's being built up from the ground. And that's exciting for us. And so, you know, anytime we can be on national TV and be the only show that night and we are showca showcasing San Jose State University, I am all for that. And I absolutely love it. All right. Thank you, Coach. All right. Thank you, guys. Guys.